narrative of each person's practice is something very individual. The Buddha set out four basic patterns. People for whom the practice is easy and fast, those for whom it's easy and slow, then the, those for whom it's painful or difficult and fast, and those for whom it's painful and slow. We'd all like to have our path be the one that's easy and fast, but those are all gone. The people simply had to listen to a few words from the Buddha and were able to gain awakening. They've all gained awakening. That leaves the rest of us. And you can't determine ahead of time what your path is going to be. A lot of it has to do with past karma. And so if your path is difficult, whether it's fast or slow, you've got to learn how to deal with the difficulties. And sometimes that means just slogging through. This is one of those areas where Faith in the principle of karma is very important. This is why faith or conviction is one of the strengths. It's the very first one. Conviction in the Buddha's awakening, which basically means conviction in the principle of karma, and specifically the conviction that our happiness and our misery, our pleasure and our pain really do come from our own actions. We can learn from our past mistakes, and through our own efforts we can gain awakening. Because after all, the Buddha said his awakening came not because he was a special person, but because he developed qualities of the mind that everybody can potentially develop. And even in his case, he had to go through six years of torment before he found the right path. So that means we have to be prepared for difficulties in our path as well. Otherwise, you try to bypass around the difficulties and you just create more problems for yourself. Because the bypasses tend to be dead ends. You kind of work your way back, get on the path. In other words, sometimes we just like to not have to deal with the body at all. Say there's pain in the body, or we have negative associations with our body, and we just rather we just drop it, blank it out, and find another path. But it doesn't work that way. All the practice of the Buddha starts out with start out with the body. So you've got to work through that. Whatever your relationship to your body is, whether it's difficult, based on problems you had with it as a child, abuse, negative associations, whatever, you've got to back up and reconnect with the body, no matter how difficult it may be. And there are techniques to make it easier, in the sense of learning how to breathe through the body so it's not total pain, not totally alien. But there are times in the practice where you just simply have to sit with the difficulty to figure it out. This is how wisdom develops. This is how discernment develops. It's not the case the mind settles down all the time and gets into a nice blissful state and then just gains quick and easy insights. Sometimes the insights have to come through making mistakes, dealing, slogging through the difficult parts of the practice. This is where equanimity and patience come in. You may not want the difficulties, but they're there. So you say, well, what am I going to do? I've got to face them. And for us, for why they're there, what your past karma may have been that create these difficulties, just put that aside for the time being. Otherwise, you tie yourself up in even further knots. Say, okay, whatever the problems were in the past, this is the problem I'm facing right now. 
and don't load the present moment down with past problems or future problems. Just focus on whatever the issue is right now, whatever problems you have relating to the breath, relating to the body, relating to the dry passages in your meditation. Remind yourself that patience and equanimity are perfections. Equanimity is a factor for awakening. Patience, as the Buddha said, is the ultimate austerity. In other words, the fire of austerity that burns away the defilements of the mind. So even if you don't feel that you're developing anything else in the practice, you are developing patience, you are developing equanimity. That's an important part of the practice. Those are important qualities to develop. And then around those qualities you want to develop discernment. In other words, if your patience keeps thinking about how long you've had to be patient with a particular difficulty or your equanimity is carrying around how long you've had to just sit there and watch, that's not really patience. It's not really equanimity. You're carrying around too much patience. You're carrying around your past patience. You're carrying around your past equanimity. And it gets heavy. Just say, all I have to do is be patient and quiet us right now. Right now. Right now. And as for how long you've had to carry it, don't make that an issue. How much longer you have to carry it into the future, don't make that an issue either. Remember, the Buddha said, days and nights fly past, fly past. So what's his question? What are you doing right now? That's all that matters, What is what you're doing right now. Can you carry the patience on through this moment? Can you carry the equanimity on through this moment? And if it's just a matter of a moment, you say yes. Well, then the next moment, then you deal with the next moment then. This is how persistence becomes less and less and less of a big issue. Because you realize it's just one moment at a time. The old story that every journey starts with one step, or is taken one step at a time. Remember that. Years back when I was in Thailand, sometimes there would be heavy rains during the alms round. Rain and wind, and there was no way you were going to go out there and not get wet, even with a big umbrella. An hour and a half. And if you thought about the whole hour and a half, it, it seemed like a really big obstacle. An hour and a half being drenched, coming back and not having dry robes to put on because the dry robes were up at the top of the hill. And if you thought about that, it just made it harder. But if you just took it one step at a time, you found that after all you were back and you were okay. You had your food in your bowl, you had food to eat for the day, and the alms round was passed. And it wasn't that big of a burden. You have to take the same attitude to the difficult patches in your path. You don't know how much longer they're going to last, and so don't entertain any notions about how much you think it's going to last, how much longer you think that patch is going to last. Just say, okay, okay, I've got this right now, but it's not too difficult. I'm not dying. And maybe it's an issue I haven't worked out yet, but. Tell yourself, maybe it's an issue I haven't worked out yet, but who knows? Maybe something will come in this session. So don't let yourself get frustrated with the obstacles or the difficulties you encounter. Remember that patience and equanimity are important virtues. And this is how they're built, one breath at a time. This is how all of those Capricorn perfections, determination, truthfulness, persistence, patience, the ones that require work, the ones that require that you slog through things, this is how they're built. It's one step at a time.
and those steps are nurtured by your conviction and the principle of action. Realizing that the meditation is your only hope. Even if it's not going well, you've got to pin your hopes on it so you stick with it. John Fuang used to like to make a pun about the issues of persistence and mindfulness. He says, in each case, it's a little thing. The word intai is nit, but he says you have to do it continually. The word also is nit. It's spelled differently. It's something small, but you just keep at it. That's how you build these perfections. That may not fit in line with the narrative we would like to write about our practice. The person who sat down and without much difficulty figured everything out. But you can't write the whole narrative simply through your present actions. A lot of your past actions have determined the shape of the narrative. And if it's the narrative where the practice is going to be difficult and long, but at least even a long and difficult practice does end in awakening if you stick with it. And if you learn how to encourage yourself along the way. This is one area where our culture is really lacking. teaching children how to be patient, how to be equanimous, and how to stick with difficult tasks for a long period of time. Generally, we're encouraged to focus on the areas where we're already talented and to focus on the areas where we see quick results. But not everything in life is going to be an area where you're talented and can see quick results. A lot of the things in life are things that are going to require this ability to slog on through. And that requires your ability to encourage yourself, to give yourself pep talks along the way. This is one of the reasons why we have Sankha Nusati, recollection of the Sangha, is an important practice. Think about all the difficulties the monks and the nuns went through the ones who were about to commit suicide because they hadn't gotten any concentration for 30, 40 years. And then something clicked, and they gained awakening. So instead of hoping for some god to come down and help us, realize that you do have the potential. Now, it may take some time for that potential to mature, but you can help the maturity along by being mature in your practice, learning to have a balanced attitude of equanimity and patience. And if your path is the one that's painful and difficult and long, at least see the narrative all the way through to the end. After all, the Buddha once said, if you can make a deal that someone would spear you with a hundred spears in the morning, spear you with a hundred spears at noon and another hundred in the evening, every day for a hundred years. But at the end, you'd be guaranteed to get an awakening. He'd say it, was a, it would be a deal worth making. And when the awakening finally came, you wouldn't regard that it had been attained through pain and difficulty. Because at that point, the, the bliss of the awakening would blot out your concern over the difficulty or the pain that you'd been through. Awakening is that valuable, it's that important, it's that worthwhile. So take these thoughts and make them part of your pep talks, part of your way of encouraging yourself along the path on the times when it's difficult, when the dry patches seem awfully dry and awfully long. Drop the thought of the dryness, drop the thought of the longness, just say, I'm just right here, right now. Can I manage this moment? Well, yes. And then just do that moment by moment by moment continually. And that's how a moment of patience becomes part of the perfection of patience. A moment of equanimity becomes part of the perfection of equanimity.
And that's how the narrative, whether it's fast or slow, pleasant or painful, that's how the narrative gets good. That's the part that you can write in the present moment.